Welcome to another edition of Telescope Man. You know, recently we've been getting a lot of questions about diagonals on astronomyforum.net. Now, I know you old-timers are going to say, I can't believe that Telescope Man actually did a uh, demo of diagonals. But believe me, for a beginner, when you say the word diagonal, they really don't know what you're talking about. So today, we're going to try to show them what a diagonal is, if they don't know it, and the various types of diagonals, different sizes of diagonals, and answer some other questions that kind of go along with a diagonal. So, first off, let me show the beginners a diagonal right here. This is a diagonal, and this one happens to be a one and a quarter inch diagonal. And what you do with it is it fits into the focuser, usually on a refractor style telescope. This, this part right here goes into the focuser, and you tighten down the little thumb screws on it. And what it does for you is when the telescope is pointed towards zenith, almost straight up, it would be very difficult to look through if you didn't have one of these because your neck, you would have to get way down real low and look through the telescope. But with this little device called a diagonal uh, in the focuser, then you can just simply look into the, to the diagonal right here and see the image uh, from the object that the telescope is pointed toward. Now, why did they call it a diagonal? You got me. I don't know. It looks kind of like a letter L to me with a box on it, all right? Don't know why they called it a diagonal, but they did, and so we're stuck with it. So what is this thing? Well, it's just simply a couple of tubes with a thumb screw on one end, you can see it right there, and that's where the eyepiece goes. Then you tighten this down. And it's got a mirror on the bottom here, and it basically, the light comes in from here, out of the telescope, it hits this mirror, and it bounces out through the eyepiece, and you can see, uh, because you see the reflection in this mirror. Now these, are, these mirrors in here are what's called First surface mirrors. It's not like the mirror uh, that you might shave with or something. That's not a first surface mirror. It's actually got a coating on top of uh, glass and then silver or something on the bottom. So it's, there's a surface there. But on a first surface mirror, uh, the actual surface of the mirror is where the re reflection is coming from. So these are all, all have what's called first surface mirrors in them. They have different reflectivity. And if you start looking up, uh, if you'll Google diagonal telescope uh, on Google, you're going to hit a bunch of diagonals. If it says standard diagonal, then this mirror is about 90 to 94 percent reflective. In other words, it's going to bounce 92 percent of the light or 90 percent of the light, whatever it happens to be, that hits it into your eye or into the eyepiece. All right. If the diagonal says enhanced diagonal, it's going to be about 94 to 97% reflective. If it says dielectric coded or dielectric, and that just happens to be what this one is. This is an Astrotech dielectric, see it right there, dielectric coded mirror. It's going to bounce 99% plus of the light that hits it will bounce off. So right off the bat, my first recommendation to you would be 
if you don't have a diagonal, be sure that you basically go out there and get yourself a dielectric coated diagonal. They're not very expensive. I think I paid $69 for this, something like that, $70 for this dielectric coated. And the other good thing about that coating is it's very tough and durable and it does not deteriorate. So that diagonal, and as you noticed, I had it nicely covered up. Both ends of it are sealed so dust can't get in there. This diagonal's coating should last me for basically decades because it's so durable. And since it is durable, you can clean it just like you would a primary mirror on a reflector, same technique. And you can clean this mirror and the surface is tough and will take the cleaning more than likely with absolutely nothing happening to it. That could be 15 or 20 years from now. So, dielectric coated diagonal, that's what you want. Now, if you already own an enhanced diagonal, let's, let's say 97% reflective, you're not going to notice any difference with a dielectric. It's just not enough difference between 97 and 99 for you to see the difference. But if you have a standard diagonal at 90% and you switch to this 99% one, you will notice the difference because 10% more, 10% more. So if you have a standard diagonal, it's a good upgrade to upgrade to a dielectric coated diagonal. Now, these come in a couple of sizes. So this is the one and a quarter inch size and what they're talking about is the size of uh, this right here let me get this little cap off they're talking about this right here this is one and a, one and a quarter inch which means one and a quarter eye, inch eye pieces fit down in there and then you can tighten this little uh, thumb screw and keep it keep them from falling out so this is a one and a quarter inch now let me show you a two inch there's a, a drastic difference in size, okay? Here's a two inch. Let's see if I can get them both in there. You can see the two inch, much bigger, even though it's just three quarters of an inch difference in this hole right here. This is two inches right here. This is a little adapter that they all come with that goes in here. And now I can use one and a quarter inch eyepieces or two inch eyepieces, depending on if I use the adapter or not. Again, it's got that thumb screw on it that you tighten up either the, the adapter, which I just did, and then your eyepiece goes up in here and you can tighten this thumb screw to lock down that eyepiece or you simply pull this out and then use this thumb screw right there to tighten up the eyepiece again this is a dielectric this happens to be a Williams optics two inch dielectric diagonal you got a mirror down there that's reflecting 99% of the light so little bit more expensive, but notice the bill quality is a whole lot more substantial. Whole lots more substantial. Now the key thing to remember with a two inch, generally, generally if you buy a commercial scope today, this one's going to work just straight off because um, the focusers that are being used are usually always 1.25 inch focusers. So this is going to work. However, some scopes have 2 inch focusers. So this tube is 2 inches. And it basically uh, has more, it, it captures all the light that's coming through that tube. 
okay the focuser is two inches you want to capture all that light use a two inch focuser if i was to use a one and a quarter inch eyepiece uh, in a two inch focuser scope uh, it would lose some of the light it wouldn't be it'd just be capturing the center portion of it so that light coming around the edges would not come through this diagonal so if you have a two inch focuser be sure that you buy a two inch diagonal now these come in two styles the one you're looking at is the sct style schmidt cassegrain and <clears throat> the way this works is that i use this one on my lx90 for example it's got a screw on it actually screws on there it is to the back of the telescope tube on the LX90 just screws right on there because the LX90 the LX200 uh, uh, Celestron type Schmidt Cassegrains have what they call an SCT thread on the back of the telescope that these type of diagonals just screw into when they are screwed in you could imagine that it's very stable because you know it screws way down into it so it's going to be much more stable than this type which is just going to be held on with a couple of uh, thumb screws that's how you're going to hold the little one on there this one is actually screwed into the back of the scope so it's going to be very stable if you're doing webcam imaging for example and you have a two inch focuser let's just say it's a refractor be sure you get yourself a two inch uh, diagonal because the better the best side of it is that webcam can fit down in here if you need it to in the center of this mirror where probably the wavelength is very good in the center of the mirror that's uh, in this two inch uh, diagonal here so the center of the mirror probably has the best wavelength uh, machining of the whole mirror you get out on the edges is where they might have made a, a little error so uh, it's real good even if you're going to use uh, like a one and a quarter inch webcam or something use a two inch diagonal especially if you have a SCT because you can screw it on it's going to be real stable now notice the little short screw on there they also make one of these for refractors with two inch uh, focusers on them and in that case you won't have this uh, screw on thing here it'll just be a straight tube similar to this one just a straight tube instead of this screw on thread so be sure you buy the right type if it says SCT on it it's going to have a screw on type connection and if it says refractor it's going to have just a little tube that fits into the focuser so be sure you buy the right type now one of the other questions we get on diagonals that has something to do with diagonals is uh, the proverbial question comes up all the time I just bought this scope and uh, everything is upside down and I want to use it to look at mountains in the distance or birds in a tree or whatever else and how can I do that well they make a special erecting prism diagonal this is one it's a little uh, low-cost one made by Orion and what it does is it uprights the image it erects the image uh, in its proper orientation so if you have a refractor and you want to do bird watching well you need to run out and buy an erecting prism diagonal if you just google that you're going to get a bunch of hits 
why are scopes astronomical scopes? Why do they have an upside down image? Because to erect the image would require more glass or more mirrors. And you could have a decrease in light throughput. The more glass you put in the way, uh, the less photons might, may or may not come through. So for astronomical purposes, they just leave the scope inverted or backwards or however you're looking at the image when you look through it. And that way they can get the most light put through that tube. And in space, remember, there's no up or down. So really doesn't make any difference. So if you have a scope and you need to look at birds or boats out at sea or something, get yourself an erecting prism diagonal and you'll be able to do that with your scope. So now you know just about everything there is to know about diagonals. So run out there and buy yourself one or two. And as I always do, I wish you clear skies and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. See y'all later.